Today we're gonna make this simple, professional looking scrolling credits. We're gonna make them in DaVinci Resolve without using keyframes, without using plugins, and without going into the Fusion page. Let's go. So let's begin with a new project. Go to the Effects panel, Toolbox, Titles, and drag the scroll effect to the timeline. What this scroll effect does is that it moves text from the lower part of the screen to the top. The speed depends on how long the clip is and how many rows of text we have in the text box. If the clip is long, the movement is slow. If the clip is short, it moves faster. For now, let's put the clip length at around 20 seconds. This clip is going to be our left column for the job titles. Let's position the text correctly within the frame. Change the alignment to right margin and the anchor to left of center. Let's put in some placeholder job titles. Job title one, job title two, and job title three. And let's reduce the size of the text all the way down to 24. Now the size of the text can vary in relation to the resolution of the timeline. This timeline is in 1080p. So if you're working in 4K resolution, this size may be too small. So you may have to adjust the size. Let's drag our clip to the second track. Now while pressing Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, click on the clip and drag down to make a duplicate. This new clip will be our right column, where we'll put the names of the crew. Now change the alignment to the left margin and the anchor to the right of center. Now let's change the text to name one, name two, and name three. Let's give these columns a little more space. Go to settings and change the position a bit more to the right. So now we have our left column on the top track and our right column on the bottom track. Closing credits usually involve a long list of names and job titles. And it's a good idea to have this information well organized before you start making your end credits. The best way that I've found to organize all the information is to use a simple spreadsheet like this one. Now you can use an Excel spreadsheet or as I prefer, a Google Sheets database like this one. Here I have some example names and their corresponding job titles. Structure your database with three columns. One for the job title, the left column, one for the name of the person in the right column and a center column, which I'll explain shortly. Let's copy the job titles from the left column. Click on the first cell at the top of the column, scroll down to the end of the credits. Then while pressing the shift key, click on the bottom cell. All the cells are now selected. I'll explain in a moment why we have to select all the rows in the column, including these empty cells. Copy the text with Command C. So back in DaVinci Resolve, delete and paste. Now for some reason these lines from the spreadsheet show up, but once you click outside the clip and select it again, the lines disappear. As you can see the left column is scrolling faster than the right column. The way the scroll effect works is that it moves all the text that we put inside the text box. In other words, a lot of text is going to go faster, less text is going to go slower. Now let's paste the names for the right column. Copy the right column from the top all the way to the bottom. Back in Resolve, select the previous text, delete, paste. Again, these lines will disappear once we click outside the clip. Now the text is scrolling very fast because both clips are only 20 seconds long. But if we change the duration to something like 2 minutes, then the text scrolls at a more adequate speed. Now most end credits also have a center column. The middle text serves to organize the credits into specific groups, such as sound design, makeup, visual effects. So let's create and position the center column. While holding down the Option key, click and drag the left column clip. Let's put the duplicate on track number 3. Now we have the center column at the top, the left column in the middle, and the right column in the bottom track. Let's select the clip on track 3, 
and change the alignment to center and the anchor also to center. Let's go back to our spreadsheet. In this example, I'm using the center text to group together post-production and visual effects. Here we have post-production in a row by itself and the same with visual effects. Now at the very end, here I just put some legal text that we often find at the end of the credits. This is the reason we copied those extra rows in the left and right column. If we want our three columns to scroll at the same speed, then the three columns must have the same amount of rows. So we're going to copy the entire center column from the very top to the last row at the very bottom. Copy back in DaVinci Resolve, select all the text in the text box with Command A, delete and paste. Let's click outside the clip and the text turns to normal. Now the center text is positioned correctly. We have post production here and visual effects. The text at the end of the credits is also in the correct place. In this example, we're using lowercase and uppercase letters for the left column and all capital letters for the right column. I think this combination makes it look a little more professional and it emphasizes the names of the crew. Take for example, Spider-Man No Way Home. The left column is a combination of lowercase and uppercase letters, while the right column is all capital letters. And of course, the styling of the end credits can be different from film to film. For example, in Oppenheimer, both columns are using uppercase letters, but the right column is using a bold font. Here we have the end credits from Barbie. Both columns are using lowercase and uppercase letters, but the right column is using a thicker font. So let's say we want to change the style to something closer to the Barbie credits. Now the Barbie credits seem to be using a font similar to a font named Balada text. Let's choose it from the menu and let's change it to pink. Same for the left and center columns. And there we go. Now, it might be the case that you don't have the Balada font installed. However, you can get it from the Google Fonts website. They have a wide selection of free fonts that you can download and install. Now, it's my recommendation to use fonts within the same font style. Because if we use drastically different fonts, then the columns are not going to align. But within the same font style, we can change the font face parameters. For example, let's change this to bold italic. It's a different font face, but the columns still align from top to bottom. Now let's find something similar to the Oppenheimer scrolling credits. For this, let's use a font called Oswald, which I also downloaded for free from the Google Fonts website. Let's make this text slightly bigger and bring up the font size up to 25. Let's go to the left column and do the same. Bring the size up to 25 and the same with the center column. And we can see that the rows are aligned. But let's accentuate a difference between the columns by changing the font face for the left column to medium. Despite the two columns having a different font face, the rows remain aligned throughout because they have the same base font. Now, if we want to make any changes, like adding or removing a credit, we have to go to our spreadsheet and make the changes from there. At the moment, we have two set designers, but now we have a new set designer named Peter Parker. We add another row below and put in Peter Parker. Let's add one more new name. We now have another chef and his name is Tony Stark. So now we have to copy and paste each column back into DaVinci Resolve because a row has been added to all three columns. Even if there's a slight difference of the number of rows between the columns, then the speed of the scroll will vary and the rows will eventually be misaligned. Let's copy the right column. 
copy. In DaVinci Resolve, select all the previous names with Command A, delete and paste the new text. Back in the spreadsheet, copy the left column. Back to Resolve, select the left column clip, delete the previous text and paste. The same with the center column from the top all the way down, copy, back to resolve, select the top clip, delete, paste. Let's see. So here we have Peter Parker and down below we have our new chef, Tony Stark. And all the rows are aligned. And there you go. Scrolling credits, professional looking, no fusion, no plugins, no keyframes. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.